Hello everyone and welcome to Lancelot's Nerd Corner, where I'm proud to present another 12th scale figure review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Night Crusader Batman by Mayfex, and I'm really glad to be giving you my honest and detailed account of the figure. Just as with my 1-6 scale reviews, I'd like to start with the head sculpt. And this one is painted and sculpted very well, with no mishaps or imperfections, at least that I've been able to find. The bat ears are made of rubber, so they're not so pointy, but they can be bent out of shape, so just watch out for that. The expression on this head sculpt seems a bit more frowny and scowly than other Batman figures from Mafex, but to be fair, he was going through a lot in Nightfall, so I don't blame him. The overall proportions of the facial features are also different from previous Mafex Batman figures, which gives us assurance that they didn't just reuse an old head sculpt, and shows Mafex's commitment to comic accuracy and how they tried to abide by Jim Aparo's art style. But Jim Aparo was not the only artist involved with these iconic depictions of Batman in Nightfall. Kelly Jones was also responsible for some incredible issue covers during the entire run, and Mafex made sure to include an alternative head sculpt that is in the Kelly Jones art style. The most notable difference is obviously the really long bat ears and way more fearsome expression. And again, the bat ears on this one are also made of rubber, and because these are longer, they're more susceptible to being bent out of shape. In fact, you can probably see mine is already. Lastly, the figure comes with another alternative head sculpt with the yellow rebreather in the mouth, and this is mainly used to recreate the scene where Batman had to swim in a flooded tunnel. And other than that rebreather, the head sculpt is virtually identical to the standard version. Now let's take a look at the figure itself, which stands at just over 6.5 inches, or right around 17 centimeters. And the overall physique is indicative of earlier depictions of comic book Batman, as the proportions were way more unrealistic back then. Although to be fair, they are still pretty unrealistic today. The figure does seem a little slimmer than modern depictions, like the Hush Batman, although the Hush Batman is built like a tank. And you can see the abs are sculpted differently from Hush Batman, which reflects both the comic accuracy again, as well as the change in design over time in Batman's body. And as always with Mafex Batman figures, the musculature is sculpted incredibly well all around. The belt is bright yellow, helping to add a pop of color, along with the bat symbol on the chest. It's made of a really hard rubber and is sculpted with a big buckle in the middle, as well as 12 canisters in total all around. Now the trunks are also made of rubber, but they're quite stiff, and I would have liked to see a softer, more malleable type of rubber, like with the Hush Superman figure for example, as it allows for a little bit more articulation of the legs, especially when raising it up. Now for the last major aspect of the figure, the cape is one of the best, if not the best, I've had from any of my Mafex Batman figures. It incorporates all the best aspects of a great cape without any of the negatives that came with the previous ones. For example, unlike with the Hush Batman capes, I think this one is the perfect length. It's not too much to be a hassle, but it's enough to get great dynamic poses. Speaking of which, there are four wires in total, two on the sides and two towards the middle. And I really love the jagged edge of the cape, as it's obviously comic accurate, but also really helps to achieve that menacing look of Kelly Jones' art style. However, because the neck portion of the cowl also covers the shoulders, it does interfere with raising the arms. And the shoulder spikes can be quite pointy, so be careful when handling it. If you don't like the shoulder spikes, however, you can just completely swap it out entirely because the figure comes with a second cape that is virtually identical except for the shoulder spikes. So if you prefer that classic look slash gym apparel style, Mafex has got you covered with this cape. And lastly, in order to switch them out, there are three pegs under the cowl that correspond with three sockets around the neck. And in terms of the overall figure, I really haven't been able to find any paint imperfections at all. Maybe the bat symbol could have been a bit cleaner, but otherwise it's been fantastic quality control from Mafex, at least with my version of the figure. However, there is one potential issue, 
and it's not necessarily a QC thing, it's more of a design choice. You do want to be careful of how tight the lower abdomen joint is because it could be prone to snapping. It's theorized that the peg connecting the lower ab joint to the trunks is really long and so if there's too much pressure on it from a tight joint, it's more likely to snap. And in fact, overall, most of the joints on my figure were quite tight out of the box. So again, be careful, warm up the joints slowly, and you may even need to use some lubrication. Now let's quickly go over the articulation of the figure, which with Mafex figures is often more than enough. Starting with the head, like many of Mafex offerings, the figure has a backwards bent peg, which allows for lots of room to tilt up and down and the usual swivel and tilt side to side. But because of the way the cowl is sculpted, there is no separate neck joint. The arms have a butterfly joint at the shoulder, and like mentioned earlier, the cowl prevents the arm from swinging forwards and backwards 360 degrees, as well as interfering with raising the arm laterally. However, the bicep swivel can still spin 360 degrees and the double jointed elbow does get restrained a little bit by the forearm colliding with the bicep. For the torso, the diaphragm joint can extend backwards a lot, almost unrealistically because it leaves a gap in the middle when you stretch it to its fullest. And the abdomen can move in pretty much every direction, but again, be careful not to be too forceful with this particular joint. The legs can drop down quite generously but the bulkiness of the quads prevents it from swinging forward as high as it possibly could. And there's a decent amount of room to swing backward. You can take full advantage of the double bend at the knee. There's lots of room to tilt up and down for the ankle as well as swivel 360 degrees. And lastly, a lot of toe flexion. Now that we've gone over the entire figure, let's take a quick look at some comparisons. Starting with the Hush Batman, then here's the Hush Nightwing, and finally Hush Catwoman. To finish up, let's take a look at all the accessories the figure comes with. The figure comes with the two alternative head sculpts and alternative cape that we already covered, as well as a capeless cowl, a wired batarang, and six pairs of hands. The capeless cowl is sculpted identically to the regular cowl, except it's just the bit around the neck and not the part that extends over the shoulders. It's mainly intended to be used for swimming poses, but it's not exclusive to that, and you swap it in the exact same way you would swap in the alternative cape. The wired batarang is an actual wire, it's not just a piece of string, so it can be fully articulated, which is great for dynamic posing. However, it is pretty long, a little too long for my liking, so I usually keep it spooled together. And I am a bit worried how long the batarang will actually stay attached to the end, because some people had problems with the wired collie sticks on the Hush Nightwing, where the plastic bit would come off the wire, and I actually had that same issue, but with the grappling hook with the Hush Batman. The hands come in a pair of fist, relaxed, cape holding, grabbing, batarang holding, and karate chopping gestures. The grabbing gestures are great for leaping poses or to recreate some issue covers like that of Nightfall issue 3, which is my favorite cover of the series by the way. The batarang holding gestures are a staple in any Mafex Batman release, but there's actually no individual batarang for this one. However, it obviously can still be used for the wired batarang. The karate chop hands can also be used for swimming poses, and the rest of the hands are straightforward and self-explanatory. This Night Crusader Batman is an incredible 1 12th representation of a Batman from an older era. But not just that, a Batman from one of the most important and iconic stories, especially leading into the modern era. With their usual adherence to comic accuracy, fantastic paint and sculpt work all around, and a great offering of alternative accessories, Mafex did this version of Nightfall Batman justice. And if you're a fan of the comic book, or just an older Batman fan in general, I'm certain you'll be thrilled to have this in your collection.
Thank you so much for watching. If you found this review helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.